Hey everybody, Smooth Terrorist, once again. I've got a private message here from a guy named Wishless, or, or a girl named Wishless, actually, I don't know. Um, and Wishless says, Hey, your latest video compelled me to send this message. If you've got the time to read a message from a long-time viewer, though I hate the ring of the 50, even in context, it just sounds too collectivist for me. You know what, Wishless? You know what, motherfucker? You're right. That does sound way too collectivist. Um, what the fuck am I, like King Leonidas and my audience is the 300 Spartans or some shit? Hey, you know... I didn't start the whole 50 thing, well, well, not really, I mean, it came from an offhand comment I made that there's probably only 50 people out of the 2,000 subscribers I have watching my shit. Um, other people took it and, and ran with it, but, you know, you're, I should not be encouraging this. You were quite right about that, and, uh, you know, bad smooth terrorist. Uh, so, I'm not going to tell my audience, and, and let me stop speaking of my audience like a collective, you know what, you're, you're right. I'm not going to tell the people who watch me, the, I'm not going to tell the individuals who watch me, what each one of them should call themselves individually. Fuck, it's so hard to avoid collectivism in language, isn't it? It's like written right into the fucking code of the Matrix. Damn it! Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to encourage that anymore. I'm not going to use that term. I, I, I think I think wishless here is is quite correct. It does sound collectivist. I don't like the direction it's going in, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, anyway, let me go back to the uh, message, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, just the the pertinent parts. Wishless also says, "You've mentioned that you use a lot of alternative news sources, but I don't think you've mentioned any by name except for Al Jazeera." which I also use. I just wonder what other sources you use. I'd much appreciate an answer, or hell, maybe you could make a video about that. Well, this is that video. Um, I, I sent a reply to Wishlist. I said, I'll get right on that, and here I am. Uh, y you know, let me, let me quibble with one little thing that you said real quick, Wishlist. You said... You mentioned that you use a lot of alternative news sources, but I don't think you've mentioned any by name except for Al Jazeera. I don't consider Al Jazeera alternative news. That's just a foreign news agency, but, but they are, um, you know, that, that's a major news outfit. I mean, that's, when, when, when somebody says alternative media, I think of that as, um, hell, me. Uh, people on YouTube. That's that's the alternative media. The alternative media is bloggers, uh, video loggers, um, you know, it, hell, you could consider Twitter a form of alternative media. Uh, but, but Al Jazeera, that's just a foreign news agency. But I am going to talk about where I get my news. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys the truth. Uh, you know, when, when I got the camera out and decided to start making this video, there was a scary couple of seconds where Fake Sagan almost came back. And I almost had the urge to just bullshit and, like, list just this long litany of news agencies that I don't actually listen to and watch to make myself sound better informed than I am. In, in other words, the grandstand for the audience. But you know what? I'm not going to do that, guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I'm going to tell you where I really get my news. And not only that, I'm, I'm not only going to tell you what sources I get my news from, I'm going to tell you how I get my news. Because I think that's important, too. Um, well, when it comes to mainstream media, and I don't just... When I say mainstream media, I don't just mean the corporate media in the United States, uh, because Al Jazeera, that, that's mainstream media. I mean, it's, it's not mainstream media here, but it's mainstream media in the Middle East and, and elsewhere in the world, you know. Um, it's, I don't know why I'm such a stickler for getting these terms right. Maybe that's a little bit pedantic, but I, I, I think it's important to not confuse what the alternative media is 
especially when uh, mainstream media here in the United States is trying so hard to bury the alternative media and to co-opt it. So I don't want to help them in that effort by referring to big uh, organizations like Al Jazeera as alternative media, because they're fucking not. Um, but I'm going to tell you guys where I get my news. Uh, for one thing, I bash the American mainstream corporate media all the time. But that doesn't mean I don't listen to them or watch them, because I do. Because getting all of my news from foreign agencies and not getting any news from the United States would be just as bad as getting all my news from the United States mainstream media sources. That, that, that's, you know, you're still only getting one side of the story. Um, I think with news, it's important to honor the, the time-honored uh, political adage, follow the money. Okay, follow the money is crucial when you're getting your news. Because in order to get the full picture, you want to, you want to get news from competing interests. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, I'm talking competing political interests and competing economic interests, which is, you, you know, let's face it, that's generally the same thing. Um, now, when it comes to mainstream corporate American media, I typically get my news from NBC. Now, why NBC? Why not ABC, CBS, uh, you know, Fox News, whatever? Um, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know why NBC. But I mean, I can tell you why I don't get it from Fox News because they're they're just entertainment at this point. They're just fucking straight up propaganda bullshit. We all know that. So I don't even need to talk about that. But I think, now, now maybe this is an unfair characterization, because, let's face it, all of the mainstream corporate media sources in the United States, you know, they're all jingoistic, they're all part of the corporatocracy, no matter which one of them you watch, you're getting Wall Street's perspective. But I think that's to an even greater degree when, when we're talking about NBC, and that might be unfair, but it's what I think, because... For a long time, NBC was owned by General Electric, and General Electric is a big player in the military-industrial complex, a big military contractor. Now, I think since then, they've actually been bought by Comcast, and now NBC is owned by Comcast, I think. Um, but nevertheless, they were owned by General Electric for such a long time that they've become heavily ensconced in the military industrial complex. So when you get your news from NBC, you might as well be getting your you might as well be getting press statements directly from the Pentagon. And um, that that makes sure that I'm getting that side of the story. I'm getting that 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 perspective is represented just by watching NBC, I think. And uh, by the way, um you know, it's kind of funny, uh, to, to go off on a tangent here for, for a minute, my grandfather was a sergeant in the army in World War II. His, his company was actually the first to cross over the, the Rhine River Bridge at Ramagdan. Um, and when he came back from the war, he got an engineering degree and he went to work designing circuit breakers for General Electric. And he worked for them until he retired. So it's, it's, it's kind of funny, like, straight out of the military and into General Electric. Military industrial complex, you know, the, the, it doesn't get much more, uh, doesn't get much more simple than that, right? Um, so I, I, I tend to get my, my, my dose of mainstream, uh, corporate propaganda, American news from NBC. And I typically, the form that I typically get that in is um, MSNBC. Um, and you know, you know, it's funny to go off on another little tangent, I, I, just because we're talking about uh, mainstream corporate American media. I recently heard that CNN 
is going to start factoring in reality TV into their programming schedule because their ratings are too low from just doing news. <laughs> so, so you're gonna start. We're gonna start seeing things like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and and uh, Jersey Shore and 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 Ice Road Truckers and shit. We're gonna start seeing stuff like that on CNN. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like the public in this country just can't stand to get any news anymore. You know, it's it's not enough that most of the news outlets are doing bullshit and, and fucking Shark Week, Discovery Channel, stupid shit. Now we're even going to get that from CNN. From CNN, you know? Um, shit. Dark times, everybody. Dark times. But you gotta laugh. Um, see, I get, I, I get my, I get my, um, I get my American news from, from, uh, NBC, most of the time. Which isn't to say that I ignore all the other sources. It just means, generally, on the average day, I'm getting it from NBC. And I, I do watch the news and, and listen to news and read news every day. Uh, most mostly read. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I generally don't don't view news or listen to news. I generally read news for some reason. I'm, I, I don't know why. Um, I I just I, I find that I can get more quicker that way than by listening to pundits and talking heads. I find that by reading the news, I can, you know, get get a lot more information more quickly for for whatever reason. Um, now, when it comes to foreign news agencies, the two uh, foreign news agencies that I typically get my news from are Russia Today, specifically RT USA, which is Russia Today's. Um, I mean, Russia Today itself has has like a general uh, uh, has like an English speaking affiliate for their general like world news and and Russian issues, but they have a specific English speaking uh, affiliate called RT USA that focuses on on uh, uh, news of interest to Americans, pretty much, and also Al Jazeera. And uh, I've I've been meaning for the longest time to check out the the Chinese um, English speaking news affiliate, but I haven't I haven't gotten around to that yet. Now I find it with RT, I find it with Russia Today and with Al Jazeera, you're typically going to get pretty much the same stuff. So it's almost redundant. Like that is to say, if RT is talking about something then Al Jazeera is probably going to be talking about the same thing. And uh, the, the reason for that is obvious enough. It's, it's, it's shared economic interests, you know. And, and really, when it comes to news, that's what this is all about. And this is the reason why I typically... I, I mean, a lot of people get their news from The Guardian, The Guardian UK, or they get it from CBC, the Canadian news. Um, the reason I don't typically get my news from them is that I find that there's so much shared economic interest between the United States and the United Kingdom and Canada that The Guardian and CBC aren't going to be too different from the American mainstream news. They, they might not be quite... I mean, obviously they're not going to be as jingoistic, but... Um, but you're still going to get Wall Street's perspective. You know, you, you won't get the blind patriotism. You won't get the blind U.S. patriotism that you would get from something like Fox. But you will get the same neoliberal uh, economic bullshit. You'll, you'll, you'll get the same imperialist perspective because, well, for one thing, Canada is the United States' primary trade partner. And, you know, the U.K., I mean, come on. Like, you, you know, economically, you're, you're, you're getting the same... You're getting the same source, pretty much. So I feel like I feel like there's not much point. And 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 people that say like, oh, I get my news from the Guardian. It's like, well, come on, you, you know, you you really might as well be reading the the New York Times if, if you're getting your news from the Guardian. Um. Anyway, also I find that by getting news from both sides of the Cold War. And that's, that's essentially what I'm doing. 
that's the best way to get at the truth. Because let's say if we're talking about something like the situation in Syria, what you're going to find is that the American mainstream corporate media is saying one thing, and Russia Today and Al Jazeera are saying another thing, right? So where's the truth going to be, guys? Right about in here. Right about in here. Right? That's, that's how you do it. That's how I do it, anyway. You know, if the mainstream corporate media, mainstream American corporate media is saying one thing, and so basically you're getting your news from the Pentagon over here, and then Russia Today is saying another thing, so basically you're getting your news from Moscow. Um, you know, the truth is going to be right about, right about in the middle. Um, now, when it comes to how I get my news, you know, here again, I, I, I want to say that, uh, you know, I, I always feel like I, I should be getting more news than I am, like I should be a little bit better informed, but if, I, th I think it's possible to be too informed. I, I, I think if you're too much of a wonk, if, if you're just spending 24 hours a day glued to the wire like your spider Jerusalem or some shit, then it's, it, it's, it almost paralyzes you with inaction because you're, you're, spend, you, you, you know, you're spending so much time getting informed that you're not doing anything with the information you get. So it's, it's a careful balance that you have to strike, I think, between being informed enough and still, uh, still living your life. And I, I always kind of feel this nagging, this nagging uh, urge to, to watch more news, to, to read more news. Um, but I, y you know, I, I've got to go about my day. And that brings me to my next point of, of how I get my news. Oh, oh, but before I get to that, let me, let me talk about alternative news sources, because I was just talking about major uh, affiliates, both domestic and, and foreign. When it comes to alternative media, I get my news from everywhere on the internet. Um, I, I consider YouTube to be a form of alternative media. I consider all of you guys to be citizen journalists. And granted, a lot of what you see on something like YouTube is just going to be people parroting what they heard in the mainstream media, but that's not always the case. Sometimes stories break here first, and then they find their way into the mainstream media where it gets a spin put on it. So it's, it's, it's nice to be able to get things before it has, like this Brandon J. Raub thing. That's, that's pure alternative media. No, no mainstream media sources are talking about that yet. And where did I find that from? From watching Monograph, uh, right here on YouTube. And then I, then I looked it up on, on other uh, alternative media sources just by doing a search. Um, but, you know, alternative to, to ask me where I get my alternative media from, I mean, that's... You know, that's too big of a question, because I get it from all over. I get it from all kinds of sources. And I am skeptical of the alternative media, but no more skeptical than I am of the mainstream media. I think your chances of getting... I, 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 let me put it this way. I think that if you believe you're in more danger of being deceived by alternative media than you are, by being, dece than you are of being deceived by mainstream media, you're being naive. You're buying into this phony conception of legitimacy. Um, that's you know, so so it always kind of bothers me when people talk about getting their news from a credible source. It's like, well, what what is a credible source? There's there's no such thing. The only way that that you can be sure what you're hearing is that well, fuck that. You can't be sure. You can never be a hundred percent sure that you're getting the truth. But the only way that you can be reasonably confident is by looking for corroboration. In other words, different sources saying the same thing. And I find the best way to be reasonably sure is when two enemies are saying the same thing. When competing economic interests or competing political interests are saying the same thing, you could be pretty, pretty confident that it's correct and that it's accurate, but still treat everything with skepticism, guys. You know, take, take everything with a grain of salt. That, that's, that's just critical thinking. 
you can apply that to everything in life, not just your, your news sources. Um, but now that I've talked about what sources I get my news from, let me talk about how I get my news, because, you know, just like the rest of you, I, I'm a busy guy. I, I mean, I, you know, I have a life, I do things, and I can't sit around glued to the wire all day. So typically, I use, uh, I use smartphone applications to get my news. There's RT has a smartphone app, uh, Al Jazeera has a smartphone app, and of course the mainstream media, I mean you can just get your little Google News application and, and you're getting all that. And what I'll typically do is, you know, let's say I'm waiting in line in the post office, or let's say I, I just ordered my food at a restaurant and I'm waiting for them to make it, I'll pull out my phone, start reading through the stories on RT, right there. Um, and I, I do that most of the day. I mean, I, any time I get a spare moment, I'm reading the, I'm reading, uh, the news. So, that answers your question, Wishlist. That is the, the, the truth about where I get my news. Now, when we're talking about alternative media, I used to, I used to watch uh, the real news, Democracy Now!, etc., they kind of lost me for some reason. I, I I don't know if it's because it has such a liberal slant, and and now I'm I'm like, you know, now I'm an anarchist, or I don't know if it's because I can get the same stories from them that I get from the Russians. <laughs> in other words, um, I don't know why, but they they kind of lost me. I used to read uh, Prison Planet, Alex Jones, I used to, uh, um, and, and you know, sometimes I still watch Alex Jones on YouTube, basically for entertainment, but I find that uh, I've gotten frustrated with how sloppy their, their reporting is, um, because it, it seems like he will just take stories and run with them without doing fact-checking first, and I, I you, you know, I know most of the, uh, most of the sheep are probably laughing right now and saying, like, oh, this guy expects rigorous rigorous journalistic standards from InfoWars, ha, 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 ha. Well, you know, yeah, may maybe that's obvious to you. Um, I, I like, I, I used to like getting some uh, news from them because they would typically be talking about things that you wouldn't hear anywhere else. But lately, I, I just, I, I've become disillusioned with how how sloppy they are. I, I, I just... I don't, I don't think they do enough fact-checking. I, I think they... I think they just run with stuff before it's been confirmed, before they've bothered to verify anything, and, and it, it kind of... It's, it's discouraging me from, from getting... getting any news from that, from that source these days. Um, and I think that about wraps it up. That's, that's pretty much... My main three sources are NBC... Russia Today, and Al Jazeera. Those are my main three. And like I said, I've been meaning to start getting into the Chinese news, and I probably will do that soon. Um, and I, I also get alternative media from all over the internet, and I get, um, I also get mainstream American news from other sources besides NBC, but it's mostly NBC. So, this has been the, uh, where I get my news video. Um, it's been The Smooth Terrorist. If you enjoyed this video, then download it, re-upload it, mirror it, parody it, make it your own. Because the, uh, the news hounds at Google cannot censor me unless you let them. Keep it smooth.